Well, I must say, it felt, it felt much more intimidating from this side. Uh, first of all, good morning, everybody. I uh, would really like to thank Autodesk for inviting Pokemon Department to such an incredible event. And then they poses a really interesting challenge. How we can inspire people and show so many interesting things we want to share with you guys in 15 minutes. And believe me, it's not an easy challenge for us. That's why we wrap up and create a quick little video that started highlighting the things that we believe is going to change and shape the future. We are wondering what is happening to the world. The original Industrial Revolution was driven by the discovery that you could use steam engines to do all kinds of interesting things. But that was followed by additional revolutions for electricity and computers and communications technology. We're now in the early stages of the fourth industrial revolution, which is bringing together digital, physical, and biological systems. The speed is mind-boggling. What I'm particularly concerned about, it is how little the world is prepared for the fourth industrial revolution. If we are not innovative, if we're not creative enough, it will be very difficult to survive in this century. So the four industrial revolution is not a new concept. We heard about it a couple of years ago, but is it now that's starting affecting our every day of doing things? How we work, how we communicate, how we interact with each other. And then most importantly, it's starting to affect our own industry, architecture, engineering, construction industry. So we have seating, we started 30 years ago, 50 years ago, from hand drawings, CAD, parameters, and BIM, and the speed and acceleration of innovation in our industry, it increased drastically. And this is what we've done today. So, the full industrial revolution is finally here. And it's affecting how we do things, it's affecting our industry. How do we design, how we collaborate, how we communicate. But the real question for us now is how this global phenomenon that is happening all around the globe is actually going to affect us. And how this new and disruptive technology that is a four industrial revolution with many breakthroughs on technology and processes is going to reshape our continent and how we can use these new technologies in innovative ways to take Africa to challenges. How, in our particular case, Point Cloud study helping us to resolve a unique <coughs> challenge that at least we have as architects every time we start a project. That is this. How every time we have to interact with a system structure that's 10, 20, 30 years old, this is what comes to the table. So how now we can produce a quality architectural result but the information that we got right at the beginning is nothing better than this. And we are really scared to use this information because we don't know how accurate this information can be. So how thanks for the technology like Point Cloud, <laughs> but it's a little bit more high-tech approach. It allows us now to capture existing structured buildings and components in an African cities with the accuracy of the millimeter, as you're aware of what laser scanning does. And how this one doesn't just allow us to capture millions of little points, but get a better understanding of buildings. What is the site? How is the look like? What is the tolerance? What is the measurement? What is the level? And so on and so on. But then, into more low-tech approach, how photogrammetry is started then helping us to solve a different challenge. But it's not existing structure. Now it's a real site. So this is a real example and real project that we involved with that the client approaches on Accra, the city of, um, the city of Accra in Ghana. And this, as you might know, is an SD diagram. This is the very first thing that we received. And then this is the state-of-the-art high resolution image that we got from Google Earth. <laughs> For the ones that we know, our site fits there. And you can tell that kind of black line on it. 
So one of my colleagues mentioned to me that it's a rule in Ghana, that I didn't know about it, that whatever is on site takes precedent over this. So it means that now your site is being divided. That's your new SD diagram. And how photogrammetry started helping to overcome many of these challenges. So our colleagues at Palmer's in the city of Ghana, in the city of Accra, sorry, uh, flew the drone that morning at a.m., hour and a half after. We managed, thanks for the amazing program of Riga Photo, hour and a half after to have this information into our offices. But it's not just an amazing mesh model, it's a mesh model that contains certain level of accuracy, known as a point cloud, but more than enough to allow our group of designers to interact with this. This site is 8,000 kilometers away of one of the Victoria office, and an hour and a half after, we got this type of information. Most importantly for us, we got this. You can tell it's not the most accurate representation, but give us a sense of scale, perspective, materiality, surroundings, and so on. So how this is helping us to really understand that sensibility of the site, and not come out there with a generic proposal that doesn't speak with what's happening in that one. And also how Point Cloud is helping us on a unique challenge in Africa, how we can fast track the regeneration of African cities. Then we come to manufacturing, that luckily now is a lot of technologies that are not new at all, but are breaking through from the manufacturing side to our own industry. How 3D printed, additive manufacturing, doesn't just allow us to make these really cool videos, but it's helping us now to start right at the beginning, enhancing our presentation, add extra layers of information for us as architects when we have to present the project. When we break away from that 2D brochure, and we bring an extra layer of information that we can understand functionality and space and surroundings and so on. But this is for us not the real value of 3D printer. And then we can start talking about prototyping. This is the case of a real, it's a real case, but happening <coughs> also in one of projects in Ghana. But this is now the prototyping of a manual, just as simple as money, that we read with a group of designers, what this idea of mine and how things to 3D print it allow us to put together architects, contractors, facade engineers around the table. And we come up with what we think is the most optimal result that doesn't just work technically, <coughs> but also fit the design purpose that we want for that project. And then we actually been using that in the real project. Then also prototyping is helping us to enhance and make our design process richer. <coughs> Like in this case, this is a prototype you know, of a parametric brick wall into many different options. So this is a real project happening right now in Zambia that's currently under construction. So how architects tend to be really naive. We put a beautiful picture on the table, but we don't know yet how to do this on a work, how we're going to make it happen. But these kind of technologies allow us to put prototyping on the table, sit all of us, and start understanding the constructability of this. And then, <laughs> as unique African challenge is, What's happened? Well, your contractor is a Chinese contractor. And you will think like, it will speak sort of like English. It doesn't speak a single word of English. So how now, digital, virtual reality, augmented reality, and 3D printer became a fundamental player to bridge the communication gap. So how that little piece of wall that you see there, you went a long way, all the way to site. So started using 3D printed models to communicate, not just with a Chinese contractor, but with a leg with a brick man, that he never worked before with these type of bricks. So I'll use that technology to really understand where each brick will sit into position. And most importantly for us, it helped us to merge, blur the line between digital space and construction space. And in today's industry, it's a massive clear cut, there's a miscommunication, <coughs> and each architect sits on the one side and the constructor sits on the other side. How we can use technology to merge this massive gap and this is not something that we've been doing. We are trying just to catch up with the amazing work that's already happening in Africa all around. Uh, I have to ask my colleagues how to properly pronounce this, but Kojo Afati In 2013, this Togolese inventor I really developed the first African 3D printer. And for me, what is most impressive about it, he didn't bought uh, expensive components in the market. It was done with e-waste. So he was going from scrapyard to scrapyard to find an e-waste component that you can reutilize it. 2013. 
And since then, he built more than 43 printers, not just himself, but the entire community. So it's amazing startup happening already there. And this community already bought more than 40. And today, he's already past this stage. He's working on the prototype of the community of building the first three printers that can start printing houses for the community in Togo. And this is happening today. So how this disruptive technology doesn't change that how we do things, but also empower entire communities. And of course, virtual reality, that it helps us drastically to also bridge the gap, that, that massive barrier that we have, this is 2D environment. How now virtual reality helps us to communicate really complex spaces and get a real sense of perspective, space, orientation, volume. It wasn't impossible to do it before, with just a 2D drawing or axonometry or a floor plan. And then how virtual reality thinks of the democratization of this component, the break away from a 15,000 round piece of equipment to 150 round piece of cover on the phone. This allows us to not just have beautiful meetings with the, with the clients and look fancy around it, but actually bring this technology to the people that is going to interact with the building. How we can access 50 people of the community that is going to interact with that school and gather feedback. What is the school that they want? Instead of showing a floor plan, we can say, this is a school. What do you think about it? Let me know what you think. And put the kids of the school, how are you going to use it? And also start bringing again the site closer to us. So this is also another project almost about to get practical completion in the city of Accra as well. Well, this is the site. So how would a low-tech approach, with just a bunch of 360 cameras and some virtual reality components, we walk the entire building. So now weekly, we have access to a live update what's happening on site. And this is not expensive components. It's not affordable, and all of us can implement it. So now, this, that is just a single link, can be shared, and was shared across five different geologic geological locations. A client sitting in London, an architect sitting in Ghana, the facade engineer sitting somewhere in Italy, and so on and so on. But all of us have live access to this and put all of us together. So maybe, will this maybe, maybe it ought to be the future of snagging as well? Then, of course, augmented reality. It's a new technology, it's coming strong, but we need to find a purpose for it. So right now, I think all of us will be playing with snapshot and the kind of stuff, but we're trying to understand how now we can use this tool to communicate better between ourselves, to be able to have this proposal that we're working on it in one of our desks on a table, and we have a group of designers interacting with this technology. But most important for us, how we can use these to communicate better between ourselves, how we can start having meetings where we have not just a layout of three components and the 2D, but the also the mental reality. But that model now gives me the advantage of if I would have to print that model, maybe it would take me 15 hours. When I mention reality, I can get it in 10 minutes on the table. And I can have many options on the table as well. And then, this is really exciting for me. Is, this is the first project that I show you about photogrammetry. It means that this one, the drone was flew at 8 a.m. in the morning. Hour and a half after, we got the point cloud put it in the so the sun started working. In the meantime, into a main space, we sent this one to three printing of this. And then, after 10 minutes, we've got an augmented reality model on the table. What is important things about this is we've, we often see the limitations. We think there's a lot of limitations in Africa. We can just actually convert this in a lot of opportunities. So then, as a final thought, is the four industrial revolution is here. And behind all this work that we show from Bochman, and all the work and amazing talks that we're going to show today and tomorrow, it's not about the technology. It's about the people that embrace these new technologies and a mindset of truly collaboration to push this boundary. So the fourth industrial revolution is not just changing what we do, and it's also not just changing how we do it. This fourth industrial revolution is now forcing us to change and embrace a new mentality and disrupt the things we've been doing for 10, 20, 30, hundred years. And that's the only way we can now convert Africa unique challenges into a land of opportunities. Thank you very much.